CataractCoach.com, the secret to get the nucleus out of the capture bag. Let me teach you these tricks to get this great maneuver into your toolbox so you can enjoy using it in cases like this. Now you can see the patient is here, topic anesthesia, and the patient has a modest pupil. So perhaps it's four and a half, five millimeters. Here comes some anesthetic. This is preservative-free lidocaine, perhaps with epinephrine or phenylephrine. You can put that in the anterior chamber. That's gonna help give you maybe a little bit more dilation, but not much. But here's the big trick. It's Osher's viscomedriasis. So injecting viscoelastic to push that pupil margin temporarily out a little bit to give you a little bit more of an expanded pupil. And that's a much better pupil size, right? but it's temporary. As you remove the viscoelastic, you're gonna lose that. Now we're gonna make our main incision here. By the way, this is a complete cataract case shown start to finish. Our young ophthalmologists love to see these unedited cases shown from the very beginning to the very end. So let me show you everything here. No edits in this video. So now going inside here with the forceps. Now remember, my forceps are marked off at two and a half and five millimeters from the tip so I can tell the rex's size. And you know what, look at that, that pupil is just about five, five and a half. So I wanna make this rexus right up against that pupil margin, pretty darn close. So the key, the first step here in getting this prolapsed lens out of the bag is you gotta have a right size rexus. The rexus has to be big enough. Five and a half is your goal here. Do not make a baby rexus. You've heard cataract coach say it many times, no baby rexus. Because if you have a baby rexus, a four millimeter, four and a half millimeter rexus even, you try to prolapse the nucleus out of the bag with hydrodissection, it's causing too much intralenticular pressure. You could even blow the posterior capsule. So you need to have a nice, generous, big rexus. Now, watch carefully. To the side, we inject 27 gauge cannula, BSS, BSS, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. See how the nucleus comes up a little bit? That's okay, didn't quite come out. We can try again. So let's go to the other side. Don't go down the middle because you'll prevent the nucleus from coming up. Okay, we'll go back to the same side here. Inject a little bit. And here it comes out a little bit. And you saw there's a tendency for a little iris prolapse. That's okay. We, we don't let the iris prolapse, though. We manage the fluidics. There it is. Now you've got the nucleus partially out of the bag. And now using that cannula to tilt the nucleus up more. So now where's the nucleus? Well, it's hidden half in the bag, half through the pupil. The iris, the pupil, is actually doing us a favor and holding the nucleus for us. There's a floppy iris syndrome. Patient takes tamsulosin for many, many years. Now you can see extra viscoelastic to protect the cornea, but also to keep the iris at bay. And now with the nucleus held for us and tilted on its side, it's super easy to chop it. So we'll go in here with a little phaco probe. And luckily you're not in Beverly Hills with me, because if you were, See a little bit of a subconjunctival hemorrhage? We know it means nothing, but the patient's definitely gonna complain about it. Anyway, buzz into the nucleus right here. Chopper goes around, look at this, pow, two halves. Easily created those two halves. Now here's the key in doing the FACO. Stay in the center. Don't go out towards the pupil margin. Because otherwise, if you nail that flop iris, this is a blue-eyed patient. That blue iris is very fragile. If you suck it up with the FACO probe, it's going to get damaged, you're gonna cause a defect there in the pupil. Cosmetic and functional, the patient's not gonna be happy, neither will you. So again, staying in the center here, and emulsifying the pieces, and you can see how quickly you get the nucleus down. Very nicely done. Where's the chopper? In that safe position. And look at the iris starting to prolapse through the paracentesis. Yeah, it's definitely a floppy iris case. Now, could you have put in a pupil expansion ring instead or iris? Of course, you do you. You do what makes you happy and what's compatible with your skill set. And I'll tell you, not everyone's compatible with doing this case. So, Red and Rounds, that's our sister channel. I hope you've checked it out. It's an amazing resource. Even if you're a cataract surgeon like me, there's so much great material there, including how to handle a broken capsule from a retina specialist. You're gonna love it, you gotta check it out. Now, here comes the IA probe, and we'll clean up the cortex here, and we'll do a nice thorough job here. The rest of this case is pretty normal. Patient has normal Zion support, no issues there. It's otherwise a pretty healthy eye. I mean, cataract coach, you could do a better job of keeping that eye in primary a little bit. Let me set up that scope, but okay. Cortex is cleaned up pretty well. I'm happy with this. Once the eye was in the back and the eye is full of viscoelastic, we're gonna check under the iris too, just to make sure. So here's the viscoelastic going inside. Nice big fill, that's a cohesive agent. Fills up the bag very nicely, and then again, is easily removed at the end of the case. Now, here comes our lens. Let's see what we got going on here. Our lens is going in, and um, it looks like a single piece of acrylic in that injector tip. One-handed injector, which I always like. So probably gonna be a monofocal lens. And we'll start to deliver this. Let's see, deliver, deliver, deliver. There it goes, beautifully. Yeah, monofocal lens. 
Looks great, goes in the capsule bag, and now make sure both haptics and the optic are within the bag. So you run out the six millimeter optic, right? Let's just make sure it's under that Rexus. Let's make sure, get this thing dialed around, be 100% sure if you need to. Look, lift up the iris and check. Yup, it's under the Rexus for sure. There's no residual cortex. I like to check a full 360. Let's make sure everything looks great. So the lens is 100% in the capsule bag, which is beautiful. There is no retained lens cortex or lens material. That is fantastic. Let's remove the viscoelastic. Yes, we still can go behind the optic. Look at that. Remove all that viscoelastic, and then we're going to call this complete. So very nicely done here. Again, if you want to try this technique, I think it works really well. And it's really gentle to the iris. Look, there's no marks from a pupil expansion ring. There's no iris hooks marks. You don't have the extra incisions, and it's very efficient. Look at this case. This case is hardly, what is it, uh, six-ish minutes? Again, that's not our goal. Our goal is efficiency, not speed ever. If it's my eye, please spend an extra minute and make it perfect. And again, heal the end, sealing up those incisions. Those look great. Let's do a little sweep here with BSS. Make sure we get out all that little last bits of viscoelastic. Lens looks great behind the Rexus 360. And let's call this done. Beautifully done. I'm happy. For the patient and the patient's happy too. So remember, check out Retina Rounds, our sister channel. I promise you're going to love it. There's also a Retina Rounds podcast, which is amazing.